Good evening, everyone. Um, we are here tonight again um, using the technology so that we can uh, be together um, because we know we are facing the pandemic and we have to follow some, some of the criteria and one of them is uh, not gathering more than 10 people and um, so therefore we have to follow these rules but nonetheless we're still gonna have our lecture tonight um, that will be presented by me I will try to do my best um, using um, the technology that we have at the moment um, because it's um, it's a little bit different um, be talking to the camera but I know that you guys are there um, but we can't I can't face, see your faces but I can imagine them which is good um, and um, yeah so you still have a bit of a time to prepare um, your water grab your water um, to 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 yeah and then you can enjoy the lecture that we try to prepare um, before we do the initial initial prayer which will be um, done in a few minutes I just would like to to say some reminders for us well soon we return to level one we can um, commence again the activities on Sunday with uh, the kids because we have the child and youth spiritism stud every Sunday so as soon as we um, we comes back we, we come back to level one we will be doing the uh, meetings again but we will let you all know until then uh, so and also until we can't gather um, more more than ten people, we will be doing our lectures online, our study groups also online every Wednesday from seven o'clock. Um, so we can keep spreading um, the knowledge of the Spiritism. Um, and I can't remember any other. We will, uh, we will have, sorry, I rem just remember, we'll have soon uh, also a, an online lecture that we will treat these two subjects that, that are coming up for, uh, that we will have to vote for um, regarding um, the, the legalization of uh, cannabis and also the um i forgot how to say in english but um the possibility of uh seize your life if you have any uh terminal disease and we will understand a little bit more about uh, this idea uh, but from the point of view of spiritism uh, which brings us another knowledge more knowledge for us regarding um, the spiritual life the eternal life of the spirit and the process of justice of God through reincarnation uh, but we can also get some um, ideas also from the study of tonight um, we say lecture but I would rather say more like a study because that's what we'll be doing tonight and um, as you know the subject will be the true spiritists and we will talk a little bit more about um, try to get some ideas regarding this name uh, regarding this um, subject which is really important for us and make some associations with it well then um, 
before we start the meeting we would like to um, do our our initial prayer so that we can um, prepare ourselves uh, tune our mind our thoughts to the moment and be open for the knowledge and that we will receive tonight um, I haven't prepared a music here but uh, if you're more than welcome to get your music your relaxing music going on uh, to give you give you some inspiration so if you'd like to close your eyes if you feel like it we would like to elevate our thoughts to the high spheres asking Jesus our master the permission to start one more meeting of tonight as we know we are gathering his name and he said when two or more gather in his name he will also be there and although the distance amongst us we are all connected through our thought and that we can be sure that we are together asking the presence of the benevolent friends to inspire all of us so that we can learn and apply this knowledge that we receive in our daily lives with the blessings of Jesus and the permission of God our Father we will start one more meeting of tonight so be it well well then uh, to start our meeting tonight that we will be talking about the true spirit is uh, we we probably all heard something about the true spirit taste and we know that there is a passage on the gospel according on the gospel according to spiritism that we see this little passage talking about the true spirit taste but today we will see a little bit of it but we're gonna try to bring the other ideas to today's um, knowledge we're going to try to expand it um, and also as we know the true spirit is it's um, it's a passage that we can find on the gospel according to spiritism um, but before we talking about that we have to first of all go back a little bit on the past and see that we had three revelations right and we know that the first one it was Moses Moses that came with the Ten Commandments so he brought to us um, obviously in connection to the high spheres um, these um, commandments for us to to try to lapidate to work our hearts a little bit because back then we were uh, still if I can say still too ignorant inferior so we couldn't um, associate much more than that so he comes and bring those um, first ideas of of the neighbor uh, the, the, the idea of the relationship between us uh, and also preparing the field for for later on um, Jesus uh, coming and expand even more and bring even more ideas regarding God regarding humankind regarding ourselves and so first we have Moses and then we have Jesus on the first one uh, he says do not hate your enemy 
Um, I could be wrong, but that's what he said. I could um, do not hate your enemy. But then Jesus comes and say differently. He go deep on the subject and say, you have to love your enemy. You have to say, you have to love those ones that persecute you. And it's a little bit hard for us to understand a little bit. How would we be able to do that? How could we love an enemy in the same way that we love our sister, our parents, our uh, wives or husbands and children? So it's a little bit um, different, but the idea is recognize that we are all part of the same family. And if someone does evil to us, um, it's still because uh, they they can't grasp the the light yet. They can't they can't understand that we are all part of the same family. We are all children of the same God, no matter um, our religion, no matter our position, social class, uh, race, and which part of the globe we are, or even which planet we're coming from, or we are it. Because we are all linked together. We are all cells of the same organism, which is uh, the organism of God, because we are all created by it. Um, so therefore, that's the idea that Jesus comes and brings to us, showing that um, we have to love our enemy, recognize as a part of our family. But he also brings way more knowledge, way more ideas that we will be able to see some of them. And then he, knowing that we still were too ignorant to recognize, to be able to, to learn even more than he could teach us, he said that he would send to us the promised consoler. Because Jesus never left us, never left us alone. He never left us without something that we could uh, recognize him, lead us to the good and keep evolving ourselves as part of the same family, as brothers and sisters. Um, so. Knowing that, he said, I'll send you the promised consoler that will stay with you for all eternity. Because it brings the truth about ourselves. It brings us the connection. So, Spiritism comes as the third revelation, brings us the connection to the spiritual world, which is where we came from. Because we know that we are all born and the only certainty that we have is that we will die, the body will die. Um, and in between this time, we, we might get lost or we forget things, uh, the objectives that we have to go through life. And we deviate from the main path. Uh, we stop paying attention where we should and then um, we ended up um, having to, to do it again and learn a little bit more until to the point that we can achieve some degree of involvement and stay more on the spiritual world. And Spiritism comes to show us this connection between the spiritual world and the material world, explain the blessings of the reincarnation, which is the opportunity that we have to always learn a little bit more, evolve a little bit more, and also the immortality of the soul. So myself at the moment, as Lucas, at some point I will perish, the body will perish, and but the spirit returns to the spiritual world and that's where uh, we have our main life and also Jesus promised that um, his kingdom was not of this world and we like to add yet 
So it's not of this world yet until human beings start to apply his teachings or start to love each other as sisters and brothers. And then the material world will also become a, a kingdom of Jesus. But at this stage, we know that it's on a spiritual world where, where our, we can live the true uh, happiness because we know that we can't be happy on this material uh, body. We, we, we have to return to, to where we came from. So Spiritism brings us these ideas uh, to show us um, because back then on Jesus time, uh, when Jesus came 2,000 years ago, um, we wouldn't be able to understand that. Jesus obviously knew everything of it. Beforehand, he knew that humankind as a whole would take a long time to develop. And he promised the, this consoler, which is the Spiritism. And then that's where it comes the idea to do the subject tonight, the true, uh, uh, the true Spiritus. Um, and after this sort of a introduction, we can um, start going a little bit into the gospel because we will see that the true Spiritus that we have um, on the gospel. Um, when we say also the workers of the last hour, mentioning as um, the spiritists that come in the last moment, in the last call, you know, to, to develop and reach this planet that of, of um, um, because we at the moment change it from uh, a planet of trials and expiations to a planet of a regenerative planet which will have less suffering, less evil, but the trials will carry on. So that is the, the, the idea that we will be working at. And um, so after this sort of um, introduction, as we said, we have to understand beforehand that the true spirit is and the true Christian is one and only person um, because the spiritism brings all the moral teachings of Jesus and the Christians also follow the moral teachings of Jesus and when we're talking about them the true ones we're talking about the same because there is no um, no class there is no um, religion in a specific that can um, position them. The only thing that can uh, distinguish them is the charity. The charity that they apply in their lives, helping others, helping the sisters and brothers around them. Um, but to carry on, and, and we had so many examples back in the past uh, of the true Christians and now nowadays we have all the examples of true Christians through spiritism but not limited to it um, and one great example that we have to start with is Allan Kardec or um, the, the who, who put all the doctrine, the Spiritism doctrine together in these five books. And it's interesting to talk about him because he pretty much gave the last 15 years of his life for the cause of the Spiritism. And then we can see that he worked only in to make that happen and today, nowadays, we have these five books that we can study, we can learn, and we can, and then can help us to um, to improve ourselves. Um, 
and Kardec on these on these on the gospel according to spiritism on the chapter 17 item 4 he says that how can we recognize the true spiritists and then he say true spiritists are recognized by their moral transformation and the efforts they make to overcome their evil inclinations so we were worried about uh, that we need to be perfect like the chapter says be perfect but we know and god knows that we can't be perfect in only one life we can't perfect ourselves in only one existence but the spiritism comes to show us the way uh, or help us to develop ourselves and then all we need to do is put a thought to change ourselves to, to overcome our evil tendencies our inclinations because like Givaldo Franco says we all make mistakes don't worry we will make mistakes but and we are allowed to make mistakes and that's the good point because we are allowed to make mistakes because we are not perfect but the difference comes in remaining in an error if we practice and we remain on it and we don't put our strength to overcome that, that situation to repair our mistakes to um, improve on that part on that area that made us fall so that's the main point that's the the main idea of this passage that how we recognize the the true spirit is it's through our efforts to improve ourselves the moral tendencies that we have the, the, the moral transformations that we do in our lives there is um, everyone had at some point anger uh, selfishness uh, pride um, but the thing is is not having it is dealing with it is changing ourselves is in trying to improve ourselves to overcome those inclinations that's that's what Jesus expected from us that's how we can recognize the true spirit is and um, and when we go to the spiritism um, we have all the names that we should think of and the one that just recently we celebrate the um, the anniversary which was dr. Adolf Bezerra de Menezes Cavalcanti um, because in 29 of August of 1831 uh, he was born and he passed away in 11 of April of 1900 so and it's it's a very good example uh, of um, true spiritists because he was a doctor and all that he was worried about it was to put the knowledge that he had to attend the sisters and brothers in suffer he um, according to Givaldo Franco he say he said he used to say that he couldn't have a meal peacefully while a sister or brother was in pain suffering and that's how he lived his life that's how they 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 say that he was the Kardec the Brazilian Kardec Alan Kardec and he was also the doctor of the poor because he gave everything to help the poor people to attend and when I said that we were 
touch a little bit of the subject of our um, that we have to vote uh, probably next month, uh, this month or next month, I think it was changed. Um, we can see that he would never seize the life of somebody because he was supposed to save lives. He was supposed to give a quality of life for all sisters and brothers and especially for his patients. And he gave everything, he gave his own money to help them to buy medicine, to buy food. He gave his uh, ring or when he graduated university, he gave it to somebody to the point that somebody knocked at his door asking for something and he said, I'm sorry, I have nothing to give you material. But then he walked towards the person and give it a hug and says that to take this hug to his loved ones who were in need that the Saint Marie the mother of Jesus would look after them so that that the person did took his hug to the family they suddenly start feeling better because he gave some of his energy, he gave some of his fluids because he couldn't leave them without support and so this fluid was transmitted to his family and a few days later he comes back to, to Dr. Bezerra de Menezes and says, do you remember me? and Dr. Bezerra de Menezes says, um uh, I'm, I'm really sorry, my brother, but I can't remember. And then he said, I am the one that you hugged because you didn't have anything to give. But that hug changed our lives. I got better. My wife got better and my child got better. And then the next day, someone knocked at my door looking for someone to work for it and that's how everything changed he gave me his own clothes because i didn't have what to wear and then we see the example of this enlightened spirit that has been developing himself throughout the reincarnations and he is still someone that refuses to leave the planet earth because he wants to give assistance to all those who are in suffer and he is the greater one of the greatest friends of spiritism and he will help every single spiritist that ask for his help and we see that um, the true spiritist and the true Christian are the same again because it doesn't matter the name we give it to it we see that what matters is our intentions, is our love that we carry inside us, is the force that we put forth to overcome our um, inclinations. That's what makes us different. That's what makes us um, become better instruments on the Jesus um, work and um, so and also through spiritism one thing that's really important when we're talking about ch changing ourselves it's really important to know ourselves that's one of one of the very important points very important points that we have to 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 touch when we're talking about the true spirit is when we're talking about changing ourselves because we can't change what we don't know. We can't change what we cannot detect that is wrong or right. And through Divaldo, the mediumship of Givaldo Franco, Joana de Angelis brings um, a collection of um, psychological books, which is about 17 of them. 
that really deals with our persona and or our personality um, not from the point of this the point of view of a body but the broader uh, point of view the whole with the whole knowing that we are um, we, we are travelers who at the moment is wearing this cloth the, this body and what she does she treats it as a whole knowing that we are here now but we came from somewhere and we're going to somewhere else and 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 that's really helped for us to understand ourselves and um and also one great book that um one great spiritist that we have to talk about too is our dear Chico Xavier or Francisco Cândido Xavier and he brings us a very interesting book that's called The Shelf of Life and we are going to go to that because it's a book that brings a message for us which is very related to our subject of tonight so in this book there is a chapter that um, the chapter um, sorry chapter four um, right at the beginning pretty much of the book and um, this in the 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 name of the chapter is called or the message is called they stood on the parable study on the parable or in portuguese estudo na parábola and to bring this message this um the spirit called rabbi zohar ben ozias zohar Zohar ben Ozias, who was who was an Israel Israelian advisor, and now in the spiritual world, he works to he's dedicated to the spread of the truth of the gospel according to his Spiritism. So he was an he reincarnated in Israel long long time ago. I assume but now in the spiritual world he spreads the good the goodness of the gospel according uh, to spiritism and i had a quick look about his name um i could be wrong but i look it online on a page called really religi religija religijami dot me um to understand a little bit of the name and there we have the the old names and the meaning and coincidentally his name or coincidentally Zoa means little Ben son and Ozias means the strength of the Lord or we could do a translation like little son of the strength of the Lord and that's his name um, in a spiritual world and he brings us a, a very interesting story of the Lord the Lord of uh, of the world uh, who has to leave uh, for leave the, the planet earth and go uh, somewhere and he had um, and he will entrust his um, powers to three servants and soon you will be probably recognize this passage um, because um, as, as he goes and according to the capability of each one of them for the first one he gives five talents so the second one he gives two and to the third one he gives only one 
And here is interesting for us to think about because it was very interesting for me. We always thinking about when we see this parable, the parable of the talents, we always think about a quantity, um, something regarding money or fortune. And then we see one receiving five, one receiving two, and one receiving one means what? Thousands? Um, hundreds of thousands, millions, or, but he brings us um, on, on this parable, who he brings it in a simple way. He asked, they, to, to go back a little bit, they were in a meeting, and he asked permission to bring this idea about uh, paraphrasing the parable of the talents, and he comes with this idea, where the first servant of the Lord was uh, entrusted with five talents. The wealth, the power, comfort, ability, and prestige. So he gives these five talents to one. To the second one, he gives two talents. And it, which is intelligence and authority. And to the third one, he gives the knowledge of spiritism. So the third one receives only one talent, the knowledge of spiritism. And I guess from that point, we already can imagine things, but he carries on and say that the servants were entrusted with these talents and he went away. And after a long, long time, the Lord comes back. The Lord comes back and call the first servant and ask the servant what he's done with the talents that were uh, entrusted to him. And he says, Oh Lord, I'm sorry because I abused the talents that you gave me. I didn't know how to, to fulfill your will. But yet, even with my mistakes, I worked them, I made some use for it, and with the five talents that you gave me, I produce another five, which is work, progress, friendship, hope, and gratitude. So the first one on this situation brings another five even though it has mistaken, it had uh, in core, in error, as we all know, we, we are still learning, we are still early stages of, of progress. So was this first one, and he couldn't use properly those five talents, but yet he still made it produced another five and he produced amongst those ones that were around him his neighbors and he could cultivate some of them he could cultivate some of the friends and then the Lord says oh my poor servant you didn't know what you were doing and I understand, but you still produced another five talents. So prepare yourself to return to another reincarnation, in other words, and take back your, uh, your work from the point where you stopped. And you will have the help and the support of those who, who you helped before. So therefore, 
the servant went away preparing for another reincarnation. And then comes the next one. And notice that there is a very important point when he says, you, you return and restart your work where you stopped it. That's very important for now. And the second one, who was entrusted the intelligence and authority in a similar situation, um, says that the same thing. Um, he asked excuse for his incapability because he didn't know how to deal with that properly with all these two talents that were entrusted to him. Uh, but on the other hand, he mobilized um, two values out of these two talents, which is culture and experience. Um, amongst, all, obviously, amongst um, the sisters and brothers that he was living with in his time. So even though he abused or he couldn't know how to, to deal properly with the intelligence and authority, he still produced around him culture and experience. And then the Lord comes to him, that's okay, that's okay. Because you made mistakes without the intention. Without the intention. Return to the terrestrial um, field and restart your work where you stopped. Just like the first one. With the support of those um, who sympathize with you. So therefore he went away. But then comes the third one. The third one who had received only the spiritism knowledge. And then he comes to the Lord and say, Lord, I gave you back the knowledge of spiritism untouched. untouched, pure as you gave me. And he also explains himself and say that the knowledge of Spiritism is light, is a really bright light. And he learned that the law of the Lord is hard, very hard. And give us give it to each one according to their own deeds. So he was in a way afraid, right? Afraid of the law of the Lord because he said it was too hard. And, and he says more, he says, how could I use of such a light? Life full of life and brightness um, amongst the men who are divided by nightmares of um, jealousy. So he was like defending himself how he could put out this light um, without uh, amongst men who was still attached to um, the selfishness to the pride and then he also says how could I use such a light without hurt anybody or making troubles to anybody and without consequences to myself see Lord this is too too much and he doesn't finish yet he carries on 
And he says, you know, Lord, that the truth among men create problems everywhere it goes. And regarding that, I decided to put um, as, as I was afraid of your law, I judged that it would be better for me to stay on my little um, dwelling, stay on my little home, my home, sweet home, and don't do anything else. And therefore, I give you back one talent, which is the same one that you gave me untouched. Oh, and after that, the sublime, the, the sublime Lord, the sublime um, Lord, between um, sad and severe, because of the attitude of his servant, give the orders to take the knowledge from him and give it straight away to the other two, they are returning to the material life. And, um, and he says, you are a bad servant. You knew, and there is nothing I can do for you but uh, condemn you to restart your work from the beginning. And now we see the difference from one to the other. The others get the work from where they stop, but this one will start from the beginning with all the initial troubles and the obscurity, but without the knowledge of the Spiritism. And in that moment, this, the bad servant cries and say, Lord, Lord, where is your um, fairness? Now he's asking for fairness when he himself had received the greatest talent. The other ones received power, wealth, comfort, ability, prestige, um, intelligence, authority, and to me, just give, gave me the knowledge of spiritism. And how can you make it fall upon me? They all the strength of your justice. And then the Lord come, reply to him and say that you receive the greatest, the greatest talent the light of the knowledge of the Spiritism that could help and guide your brothers and sisters along the way, like the first two that made their mistakes because you hid in the light that I gave you when you're supposed to share like they did. All the talents that they received, they shared and produced more talents. But you, you decided to hide. And you knew that my law was hard. But even though you didn't use the knowledge to help the others, afraid of yourself, afraid of the consequences of that attitude, not putting forth the, the knowledge that I gave you. And... Because of that, many of your brothers and sisters fell upon the way because they didn't have a light. You didn't show through your own experience, your practice, your words, your charity. So, after all that, he says that um, he didn't share the the bit of love um, that he received from the Lord and then the bad servant still cries out Lord Lord why why do I have to suffer that that much why such a rigor 
upon me when your law is of uh, justice and now he's plead for himself saying that the law of God of God is of justice and fairness but after after that he was sent to another reincarnation without the knowledge in the context of his spiritism and he start uh, from the, the beginning of his work without the help and support that he could have had if he had put the, in practice the knowledge of his spiritism that he received and when he says that his, um, his justice, um, when he says that his justice is um, fair, right? It's fair enough. Um, for those who are ignorant, they're not going to be asked as much as, and that links us to the other passage of the gospel to to whom to whom more is given more will be asked so for those who didn't know we will be um, judged accordingly but those who who knew who especially the, the spiritists of today um, the, the justice of God will come hard because that's we know it we know what we have to do we know that we have to correct ourselves we know that we have to look around and see them as sisters and brothers and help them as much as we can and when we said that this passage or the true spirit is if we start thinking now there is a connection to all pretty much all the other chapters of the gospel and we can see exactly on this um, on this um, story that we just went through that um, for example the passage the the parable um, the, the, the workers of the last hour also implies in here because we are on a changing process of changing of the plan of the planet from um, trial and expiations to regenerative and the spirit is coming to do their bit changing themselves above all because all the knowledge that we have it's first for us and it's an illusion that uh, thinking that all their knowledge is for the others even Givaldo Franco says that when he was said once Joanna de Angelis came to me and say why came to him and say why you said and he said because you never gave me any uh, consoling word and then she said, hey, hang on, who wrote all those books that i written through you? And he said, me. And then he, she said to him, so you are the first one to read? Yeah. So these books are for you. So the spiritism and all the knowledge that we have today is first of all for us in a great book for all the spirits that we should go one day because it's a suggestion even of Givaldo he says put the light on you make your light shine and read the book Volte of brother Jacob through the psychography of Chico Xavier and the book is in English would be I returned where brother Jacob on that fantastic book who was also a spiritist 
but someone who dedicates all his time to the knowledge of Spiritism, to learn more and more, and someone that forgot to look sideways in a way to help others instead of just being regarding to Spiritism because of the knowledge that it would give, because of the revelation brought through Spiritism. And then he, he brings us humbly his own experience, which is, um, which for him could be a shame, but it was a lesson. It was a lesson for all of us. And one greatest teaching that he brings to us is that the knowledge of Spiritism and all its maxims, it's first for us. We are the main ones to receive it. And for the others, we have to teach through our own example. Because everyone can say words, but how many can show through example, through practicing it? And so on that book, which we also have, but in Portuguese only, on our library, um, after the beautiful donation of one of our members uh, and which we highly recommend reading to learn that this, this um, story also applies to us in a way and if you can see we also can link this to the chapter of do not put the light under the bushel because these spirits did exactly the same thing. He hid, he, he hide, he hidden the light from the others so that the others couldn't see it because he had to apply first to himself. And that's where is the biggest challenge. And now we come, we come back to what Kardec, Alain Kardec said, how we recognize the true spirit is, is through the effort that they put to change their evil tendencies and the moral qualities that they are cultivating. We can also go around and, and, and bring this passage in the parable of the sower. The sower. And the seeds that fell into this spiritist or the third, um, the third servant, it was pretty much uh, on the rocks, so it couldn't grow. It dries out in the sun, so he didn't leave the teachings. And so then on, um, many are called. Look, we can associate to this. Many are called but a few are chosen because the spiritism it's all there the spiritism knowledge it's to anyone that wants to learn because we know that this knowledge it's for the wise and for the ignorant because you don't need to be learned a learned person to understand you just have to have the feelings and that makes us, uh, so many will be called, but just a few will be chosen because how many of them will actually put this knowledge applied to themselves first. And once we see that, we see how hard it is to change ourselves, to overcome our inclinations. And knowing that, we will start looking in our sides and see that the others are struggling too. We are not the only ones that struggle. And we can be um, more sensitive to them. 
we have we can have compassion to them because we know that they try to and if it, even if they are not it's just like the example they still ignorant regarding the knowledge of the light of the spiritism the knowledge of the life eternal the spiritual world the reincarnation the justice of god but we know we know it and to finish i would take the same example um, i used Gibaldo frank as an example um, because he in one of his um, studies he finished sayings uh, mentioning uh, leon denise and i will also do that after all this knowledge that we learn tonight um, i'll finish the same way because i think it's it, it it really applied to us and he said and leon denis said that spiritism is what we do with it the spiritism is what we do with it so that comes the question what are we doing with it and for the attention of everyone um, thank you very much for being here with us until this moment I hope that this could help you a little bit like helped me and we finish saying that if you have any question or any doubt or any suggestion you can leave your message we will get back to you as soon as possible and in the name of Jesus we will send our vibrations to this planet that open the doors for us to carry on our involvement and to all our sisters and brothers who are struggling on the way and if we can't do something physical we can always send our love and we also would like to to say goodbye to everyone and I hope you have a good night and also that the peace of Jesus may be with you until we meet again for another meeting next week. Jesus peace may be with us.